What is your we will never speak of this again moment? I got up one night to get some water and found that my teenage son was in the kitchen getting food. He was behind the kitchen counter, so I could only see him from the waist up. When he came around the counter into the hall, two things happened simultaneously. He noticed me, and his eyes grew white in horror, and I saw that he was butt naked, except for a pair of socks. He starts trying to panic run backward on the tile floor, imagine Scooby-Doo trying to run, but getting stuck in place in a flurry of limbs, but ended up slipping and taking a hard seat on the tile. Worse of all, he dropped his hot pocket. I made sure he was okay, then went back to bed and laughed my ass off. Years later, we were driving and reminiscing about funny memories. I said, do you remember that night, and he cut me off with, yes. I didn't even have to specify which night. We knew, and we were silent. When I was 17, a huge photo radar ticket came in from my truck. Something like 40 kilometers over the speed limit. My mom was furious at me. How dare you drive like a maniac. I raised you better and all that. But it turns out I wasn't the driver that day. Dad had borrowed it to pick something up. I asked him how much it was worth to him for me to take the full, knowing she'd turn on him with the fury of an angry mama bear. And that's I got myself a new HDTV that year. My husband and I work at the same small office. We were the first ones in that morning, and other employees usually don't show up for another hour or so. There's only one bathroom on our floor as it's a small business. Anyway, I had just had some spicy habanero thing the day before, and I was in for some punishment on this particular morning. I'm talking doubled over, clutching your stomach, your farts are fire punishment. I hear a knock on the bathroom door, and I assume it's my husband. Hang on, I'm having the habanero squirts. I'll be out, as soon as I can, I groan out between awful spurting sounds. I hear a female voice awkwardly reply, oh, okay. Sorry Stacy, for pulling you into my terrible morning. My brother had an imaginary girlfriend with an imaginary Facebook profile. She would post loving, imaginary messages on his wall. I asked about her a few times, then got a little more persistent. After a while, I got suspicious, and did an image search for her photos. They were for another person in another country. Also, no one ever saw the imaginary girlfriend. If someone asked me about her, after seeing their loving Facebook exchanges, I would kind of imply that we met to spare my brother and myself embarrassment. Eventually, he stopped talking about the imaginary girlfriend, and she stopped posting imaginary things. I will never ask what happened to her. I'm pretty sure he will never mention her again. She's still on Facebook. When my best friend died, we figured he would have liked a Skype burial kind of. So, at the height of the funeral party, we released his ashes into the heavens with a giant balloon. After a few meters of flight, the string has snapped, and his remains covered the mourning crowd. Everyone did their best to get very drunk, as soon as possible. We will never speak of this ever. The smoking hot guy I met the prior weekend asked me out, and naturally, I said yes. Because I'd just met him, I asked if I could drive, and he said no problem. On the way to get some grub, we're cruising along with the perfect tunes playing in the car, windows down, on an absolutely beautiful night. He looks over, I look over, we're both just sparkling, you know. It was one of those moments, where you want to take a mental snapshot. The smoking hot guy I met the prior weekend asked me out, and naturally, I said yes. Because I'd just met him, I asked if I could drive, and he said no problem. On the way to get some grub, we're cruising along with the perfect tunes playing in the car, windows down, on an absolutely beautiful night. He looks over, I look over, we're both just sparkling, you know. It was one of those moments, where you want to take a mental snapshot. I was beyond mortified. I was throwing up in my mouth, my eyes were watering, and he didn't want me to pull over to get it cleaned up. We had to go to dinner like that, with snotty pants. So I, I ended up marrying him. We have never, ever spoken of it again, not even 40 years later. Not me but my father's story. During World War II, my father was a photographer for the 9th Army Air Corps. Most of the time, it was ground-based, but occasionally he flew. During the lead-up to D-Day, he flew multiple missions in a bomber converted to a stereoscopic camera, 3D imagery, platform, the bomb bay had been gutted, and the camera installed there. 
They would overfly France and take pictures until they either ran out of film or the Luftwaffe showed up. To minimize detection, they flew alone with the escort fighters circling out over the channel. In the event of an attack, they'd drop until they were skimming the waves and run for England, passing under the fighters who'd engaged the Germans while they fled. This, of course, didn't have its risks, and on more than one occasion, they'd be caught too deep into France, or the German fighters would get the drop on them, and they'd have to man the guns. Crew size meant even the photographers had to man a gun. So, with all that, here's the let's never speak of this again moment. They were still at a high altitude. One of the guns jammed, and the gunner took off his glove, and ended up freezing his hand to the metal of the gun. He's yelling for help, and my dad goes over and says, there are two ways, to get your hand off. Either we yank it off and take the skin off your palm, or we use the warm liquid. I know of only one source of that. Never tell anybody about this, was said. Dad didn't keep his word, and thus was born the often told story, of how my father pissed on a crewmate's hand, and the guy thanked him for it. 15 years old, I wander into the living room in my boxers, hand down the front, enjoying being home alone. President George W. Bush is on TV talking about cloning. With little understanding of what he is talking about, I yell at the top of my lungs, we're fucked. When I was home alone and a teenager, I liked to get wacky like this, probably just an outlet of excess energy, and my general facade of being a decent kid. Dance around, yell random things. Basically, if you saw me in private at any point in these years, you would have thought I was mentally ill, hell, maybe I am, who can say. Unfortunately for me, I was not home alone, and my mom was in the living room watching this unfold. She yelled at me in shock at my behavior. It was probably one of the top 10 most embarrassed I've ever been in my life, and it was never discussed again. This is my friend's story. She smoked weed a bit in high school, but obviously hid it from her parents. This one time, she came downstairs in the morning, to find a joint sitting on the kitchen counter. She knew for sure it wasn't hers, and that she wouldn't be stupid enough to leave one out like that. Her mother soon after walked downstairs, and started cleaning up around the kitchen. When she ran into the joint, she paused, locked eyes for a bit with my friend, and said, oh, um, and quickly brushed it into her hand, and got rid of it. They both pretended it never happened. My wife and I were at my cousin's apartment in a big city. They have a balcony on the 40th something floor. We were all outside on the balcony drinking some beers, and getting a little drunk. My wife rests her beer can, thank god it was a can, and not a bottle or glass, on the railing of the balcony. I scold her, and go to move it, when my half-drunk, and clumsy self, knocks it off, and we watch in horror as it falls in slow motion 40 stories, and hits the ground like a bullet next to a crowd of people. We never mentioned it to anyone. I was about 15. Definitely old enough to know better. I was putting spiders and ice cubes on the super hot wood stove, because the Ledenfrist effect was interesting. I thought it would be funny to do it with piss. It was not funny to do it with piss. For the uninitiated, what happens is the piss vaporizes, and, depending on the volume of your bladder, produces a thick, and clearly visible dark brown cloud. If you can imagine the smug line in LA, it looks like that. That cloud hugs the ceiling, and hangs down about a foot. It doesn't really move, because it's water vapor, and it leaves a film on everything it touches. It smells like burnt piss, and you can also taste it. The cloud absolutely does not dissipate before your mother gets home from work. I was sort of a naughty kid anyhow, so she thought I had started a fire with something. In order to avoid a worse punishment, I had to take the responsibility. That was the only time I can remember her looking at me with actual hatred. My husband and I were going to Thanksgiving dinner at the house of some of my dad's family, that I only kind of knew. We got there, knocked, and a woman I didn't recognize let us in. We went into the home, and there wasn't anyone there, there was no dinner, etc. So, we're making small talk with this lady, and I ask when everyone is coming. She asks what I mean. Turns out we were at the wrong house. The woman just thought we were friends of her husband, because he would randomly bring people home, and that we had simply arrived before he did. Well, me and the wife were out on the lake fishing. When all of a sudden, I felt the rumbling in my gut. I was about to shit my pants. I looked around and noticed we were nowhere near a dock, and there was nobody else on the water. So, I looked my wife in the eye, 
and told her I was sorry, and loved her very much. I then proceeded to hang my ass over the side of the boat, and had the Hershey squirts. It was over quite quickly, thankfully. My wife passed me a few old receipts from her purse, so I could wipe them. She told me she still loved me, and we kept on fishing. In middle school, my crush's mom and my mom drove the exact same SUV with similar license plates. After school one day, I ran up, hopped in my mom's car, and started talking. When she didn't talk back, and hadn't left the pickup line, I looked at her. She was not my mom. I looked to my right, and my crush is standing outside the car, looking at me like I am crazy. I sheepishly got out, and ran a few cars back to my real mom. A few years later, I moved back to the area, and was a cashier at a local store. My crush came through the line, and recognized me, and started to say, Were you that girl who, where I just interrupted with a yes, handed him his change, and quickly started the next customer. I got into a car accident for the first time in my life, when my younger brother was visiting me. I wasn't paying attention, dumb, to the car in front of me, and I rear-ended them pretty hard. Luckily no one was hurt. We exchanged information and took pictures, but there was no noticeable damage, so we left it at that. I looked at my brother, and we both agreed never, to bring it up again. I gave him that car when he turned 18. I was outside with a friend in my driveway. For some reason, I didn't have my glasses on, and a neighborhood dog ran up to me out of nowhere. I couldn't tell what it was, or initially see it coming, and I was so startled I pissed my pants, before I saw it was a Labrador. My friend was laughing at first until she realized what had happened, then she just had a big shocked face. I was so embarrassed, but just went inside and changed. My friend was older than me kind of a mentor figure, so she never mentioned it again, and didn't give me a hard time afterwards. She knew I was blind without my glasses, and that I had a weakish bladder, lol. Trying to teach my new at the time girlfriend, how to drive my manual car. She told me she had done it a few times, and knew what she was doing. Fast forward 10 minutes, and I no longer have a front bumper. She continues with, I can't believe I did this. Your friends and family are, gonna think I'm an idiot. I just replied with, I did this, and we haven't spoken of it since. Everyone thinks I'm the idiot. Doing a 12 hour drive in just under 6, with my sister and her husband. He's the one driving, and we've gotten stuck behind a semi that's going the speed limit, which will push our arrival to well past 2, or even 3 am, when we want to get there for midnight. So, he decides to pass on a dotted yellow line. Now, the highway had some slight hills, not much, but it's enough to hide headlights sometimes, like the ones of the oncoming semi. My sister's husband, in a split-second decision, decided to trust their car, to live up to his go-kart on crack nickname, and fucking floored it. We whipped past the semi we were passing, and he steered us back into our lane with very little room, to spare from both trucks. Compact versus semi, going over 120 kmph, they would have been picking us out of the semi's grill, if he hadn't judged things just right, and had such good reflexes. He looked at us and said, you parents never hear of this. And that was the last, that was said about it until this day. I was working IT for a hospital, and an neurosurgeon had ordered a new lamp for his microscope. It came in through IT instead of engineering for some reason, so it fell to me to drop it off to him. When I did, he asked me to fit it as well. Medical equipment isn't my field, but the instructions were right there on the box, so I did. Okay, cool. A new lamp is fitted, and I can see it shining through the housing. So why wasn't the PC capturing any image from the microscope? The surgeon didn't know either. It had been like this for weeks. I didn't know microscopes, but I did my best to troubleshoot. Lamp on, check. Comms cord plugged in and seated tightly, check. The PC is receiving a signal, but for some reason, it's a completely blank signal. Neither one of us could figure out the problem, so we called up a medical engineer who took one long look at the microscope from across the room and announced that the lens cap was on. The brain surgeon and I shared a single humiliating glance, and silently promised each other never to talk about this moment. A promise I've broken for your enjoyment. My husband, his family, and I all went to a baseball game in Toronto. I had spent the last few years learning how to throw a ball, and would play catch with my husband. I was pretty good and still am, if I do say so myself. 
I could throw further and harder than most men in a tournament I played. I was pretty confident in myself with throwing. At this game, we went to they had a big outside fun day thing. They had a radar set up in an inflatable tent thing. People were throwing the ball and seeing how fast they could throw. The lineup was long, but I was so pumped and overconfident. I have intense stage fright, and it was my turn. Crowds were watching me. They handed me a hardball. I had been playing softball. I'm in too deep. I have to throw. I'm not used to the ball, so my grip is off. I throw it. Somehow I miss the walls of this massive tent I'm standing at the entrance of. The ball goes far, but then a loud smashing sound is heard, followed by the crowd's whoa, it hit a car windscreen. I was beyond embarrassed. The car stopped and then, for some reason, kept driving. The event guys operating the radar didn't know what to do. I just left. My husband was in tears laughing, as if we were his family. I was so ashamed I bought a new shirt inside, so no one would notice me. I still cringe. That was like 6 years ago. I played hardball ever since that day.